This is Bill. Bill wants to hire a smart young person to work for his business. The problem is that he finds it hard to gauge people's intelligence. First, he found a kid with the biggest, thickest eyeglasses he could find. But he was shocked to find out that he wasn't so smart at all. It turned out that the kid was just nearsighted. So then he hired a kid who graduated from Yale. A kid had a C average, sure, but he went to Yale. That turned out disappointing too. It turned out that his dad was a US Senator and a major donor. Oh well. Then he found someone with a perfect GPA and SAT score. This person was smart in terms of being able to do math problems or regurgitate whatever she was reading. But she wasn't the type to think on her feet, to think outside of the box or to use street smarts uh, type of intelligence that Bill had in mind when he was looking for someone who he thought was smart. Bill's problem was that he was using bad signals to guess people's intelligence. He was using measures with validity problems. Validity means that you're measuring what you're trying to measure in your research project. In this video, I'll describe some often encountered validity problems. If you know what they are, then you can be cognizant about them in your research design, and hopefully, you'll avoid creating and fielding surveys with invalid measures. I'll talk about four types of validity. Face, content, criterion, and construct. I'll explain what they are and how to assess your measures in light of these four criteria. Face validity is the most straightforward uh, validity question that you can ask uh, about a, a question or a measure. Basically, face validity asks, does the measure make sense? Does it make sense that the question you're asking will operationalize the uh, concept that it intends to operationalize? Imagine, for example, I was uh, running a survey for a conservative political party, and I wanted to find out how liberal people were. And so I asked the question, do you hate America? And if people said, yes, I hate America, then I'd score them as liberal. This operationalization of liberalism is not face valid. Very few people would uh, argue that uh, hating America has anything to do with uh, liberalism, even though you might hear that a lot on the uh, news. Perhaps a, a, a more face valid measure is, do you tend to vote Democrat? Content validity is concerned with whether or not you are uh, measuring a, a more complicated concept with enough measures to capture its full meaning. We have content validity problems when we take a, a, a very complex concept and we use a measure that only captures a small slice of what that concept intends to uh, mean. Turning back to the example of uh, figuring out whether people are politically liberal, imagine I tried to measure people's liberalism by asking one question. Do you support higher taxes? Now, on one level, this measure is face valid because liberals do tend to support higher taxes as a group. However, taxes are only one small part of liberalism. And if I only use the tax issue to parse out liberals from conservatives, well, I'm bound to miscode people. I'm bound to classify liberals as conservatives and conservatives as liberals. Why? Well, some people are liberal for reasons other than uh, their support of taxes. They might be in favor of gay rights or they might be anti-war. Likewise, there are some conservatives who do favor higher taxes, but they favor uh, other uh, conservative policies. For example, they oppose abortion or they... Uh, believe that religion should have a stronger role in the state or public life. A way to deal with this problem is, if you have a narrow measure, narrow the concept. In other words, instead of talking about liberals, you, talk, you could talk about people who are pro-tax. Alternatively, we could expand the number of measures to keep our studies focused on liberalism. We might still ask about taxes, but also ask about abortion, the military, uh, gay rights, and a variety of other uh, issues that separate liberals and conservatives. Another type of validity is criterion validity. 
With criterion validity, we take outside measures that we know to be related to the concept that we're trying to operationalize. If our measures are good, then they should be related to those outside measures. Let's say I came up with a uh, measurement to capture people's socioeconomic status. Well, I know socioeconomic status is related to uh, other things like education, income, wealth, or maybe the value of people's home. If my socioeconomic status measure is valid, well, then it should be correlated to all of these measures. This is concurrent validity. People with higher scores on my measure should also exhibit higher scores on other measures that I know to be correlated with the underlying concept that I'm trying to capture. Another type of criterion validity is predictive ability. People who score high on my uh, SES scale should experience the uh, same consequences that are known to uh, follow high SES. They should benefit from the things that people with high SES uh, tend to benefit. So for example, if I know that people with higher SESs live longer, well then the people who score high on my socioeconomic status scale should have a longer lifespans. Finally, there's construct validity. Construct validity is something to think about when we're using multiple questions or multiple variables to operationalize the same concept. If you have several variables all measuring the same thing, they should be related. And those variables should be somewhat distinct from other measures that aren't measuring the same underlying concept. Imagine in my study I'm trying to capture people's scholastic aptitude. That's their ability to do well in school. I could use lots of different measures. Uh, their SAT scores, their GPAs, their uh, grad school attainment levels, the frequency with which they go to and graduate uh, from graduate school. If all of these measures capture the same underlying construct, then they should be related and we can test that using an advanced statistical technique called confirmatory factor analysis. It's grad school level stuff, so you won't have to know it in this class. The idea that these measures should all be related touches upon uh, the concept of convergent validity. Your scheme of multiple measures should also exhibit discriminant validity. What that means is that the collection of indicators that you use to operationalize a concept should not be related to other concepts that you're trying to, uh, that are, you might be measuring in your study. And there you have it, four types of validity, face, content, criterion, and construct. When you're developing a measurement scheme, take a moment to think about these different types of validity and whether or not the measures that you're using are adequately operationalizing the concepts that you're trying to study.